Welcome to this edition of Psychic Tips, How-Tos, and Tutorials, where it's all about helping you unlock your psychic potential. The topic of today's vlogcast is common signs from the other side. After your loved ones have passed, they're anxious to let you know that they're okay and that they're still near you. Your loved ones in spirit want to provide you not only with the comfort you need as you move through the myriad of emotions associated with the grief of their passing, but also want you to know that they can still help and assist you from the other side. And they do this in various ways. So in this vlogcast, I'm going to share with you four of the most common signs from your loved ones in spirit. Signs that are used to get your intention and also to help you heal your grieving heart. My name is Dar Payment and I'm a professional psychic medium and channel who is passionate about sharing with you how to accelerate your psychic abilities. As a professional psychic channel and medium, one of my prime functions is to act as an intermediary between loved ones in heaven and the loved ones on earth. And without fail, during every session, the loved one in spirit has attempted to contact the person or persons I'm doing a reading for. But unfortunately, many times the attempted communication goes unnoticed until the loved one becomes aware of the different ways loved ones in spirit can communicate with them. So what I'd like to do is share with you four of the most common signs from your loved ones in spirit that have been prevalent in my own mediumship practice so that you can become aware of how your loved ones might be trying to communicate with you from the other side. The first common sign is hearing their voice. Hearing your loved one's voice in your mind's ear is a very common way your loved ones in spirit can communicate with you. For some people who have latent clear audience abilities, they may even hear an audible voice, but this is a rare occurrence. Generally, the voice of the loved one is heard inside of your head. And the reason for this is that your loved ones in spirit are now existing on an energetic level and they don't have a vocal box like you and I, so they're able to communicate directly with your mind. A great many of my clients have told me that they have heard their loved ones either calling their names or sharing with them a piece of information that they really needed to know. A great example of this comes from one of my clients named Phyllis, who told me that she had verbally asked her deceased brother if he had a will, to which she immediately received a response in her mind's ear that said, of course, it's in my safety deposit box. The second real common way that loved ones on the other side send you messages are through symbolic messages. Loved ones in spirit really want you to know that they're okay on the other side. And another common way they might communicate with you is through the use of symbolic words, phrases, and numbers. The symbolic messages might come in print form, such as from books or magazines falling open to a certain page that might have an encouraging word or phrase written on it that you really need at that moment. <laughs> but it also may come from television or radio advertisements or lyrics from a particular song that you might hear. Often clients report to me that in their deepest sorrow, that something they have either heard or read immediately comforted them and eased their grieving heart. It was 1983, a Friday to be exact. My college friend Yuki Koda and I sat under a tree basking in the warm October sun. Yuki was a world-class archer and shared with me that she had the opportunity to compete for the American archery team in preparation for the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Classically trained in the art of Zen archery, Yuki shared with me that she had reservations about competing. After questioning her a bit, she shared with me that her Kyudo teacher recently had passed. Kyudo is a discipline of Japanese archery, and it's a tradition in her art to receive permission from your sensei before entering into any group competition outside of the dojo. And she explained that to compete without permission would dishonor her sensei, whom she shared with me she was very close to. I told her to ask him for a sign about what to do and to be open for the signs and synchronicities around her for the next few days, and I promised her that she would receive an answer. Two days later, she excitedly barged into the tiny dorm room we shared together. Dar, I was walking to the gym with my archery bow thinking about my sensei. I was listening to the song Footloose on my new Walkman at the time, and the cassette tape got stuck and kept looping on the following lyrics. 
somebody to tell you that life ain't passing you by. I'm trying to tell you it will if you don't even try. You can fly. I know this was Sensei telling me it was okay to compete, she exclaimed with a huge, bright smile. (laughs) Good old Kenny Loggins. Symbolic messages are always comforting and sometimes even surprising, such as in Yuki's case. The third common way that loved ones on the other side communicate with us are through dream visitations. The reason is that with the conscious mind asleep and out of the way, the subconscious mind can be easily accessed. In dream visitations, you can see, hear, and feel your loved ones. Sometimes your loved ones embrace you or may just show up and engage in activities they used to do with you before their transition. One common question I'm asked about dream visitations is, How do you know if it's your imagination or if it's a true dream visitation? Well, the way you know that it's a true dream visitation is because that dream is very lucid. And when you awaken, you feel a great sense of either peace or comfort. And dream visitations is the favorite way pets who have transitioned communicate with their masters, oftentimes allowing their pet parents to physically feel their presence once again. And the fourth very common way that our loved ones on the other side communicate with us are through signs from animals and or insects. You know, loved ones in spirit often enjoy letting you know they're around you by causing you to notice birds or insects such as butterflies or dragonflies. Often during mediumship readings, the loved ones in spirit tell me that they have caused birds or other earthly creatures to directly interact with their loved ones. Mary, a widow, shared with me how her husband loved to watch deer play. They lived in a semi-mountainous area in Southern California and at various times had the opportunity to watch a few deer frolic and play in their backyard. Two weeks after her husband passed, Mary said that she sat in the back porch, feeling emotionally numb and saddened by the loss of her husband. She said that all of a sudden, a doe appeared in her yard and instead of keeping its distance, It strode up to the porch, looked her straight in the eyes for a few minutes, then turned around and slowly made its way back into the forest. Mary said with a huge smile, I knew beyond a doubt that it was my husband, Dan, letting me know that I would be okay. Learning to recognize the common signs from your loved ones in spirit will not only help to soften the pain of a broken heart, but will also provide you with the comfort that your loved ones are okay and available to you even after their passing. Be open to and pay attention to the many signs and ways your loved ones in spirit attempt to contact you each day. And more importantly, acknowledge your loved ones every time you notice their attempts to communicate with you, for their prime motive is only love. If you enjoyed this vlogcast, I invite you to like and subscribe, and I'll make sure to give you more tools, techniques, and how-tos to help you live the psychic life. This is Dar Payment, wishing you blessings, love, and light.